In 2011, Japan experienced a massive earthquake and resulting tsunami. This was an unprecedented disaster, with more than 22,000 people killed or left missing. But 20,000 lives were also saved by rescue workers from the Ministry of Defense and Japan Self-Defense Forces, or SDF. Including Fast Force, a rapid response team for natural disasters and other life-saving operations. Fast Force maintains a broad range of specialized rapid rescue equipment and they're always on the lookout for new rescue procedures and technologies. Today, we'll look at the SDF's lesser known disaster prevention activities. BOSAI, science that can save your life. I'm at a Japanese ground self-defense force facility in Tokyo. Japan's self-defense forces are regularly preparing for large earthquakes and other disasters that could strike at any time. What do those preparations look like? Let's take a look. Nenima Garrison is a disaster prevention base. It's responsible for defending Tokyo, but also for disaster relief operations. This includes the 1st Infantry Regiment, which protects the 23 wards that make up central Tokyo. We spoke with Ground Self-Defense Force member Takiguchi Takatoshi of the 1st Infantry Regiment. の近年自衛隊が災害派遣に出動するという when a major disaster like an earthquake occurs, Fast Force quickly mobilizes and carries out rescue operations. At bases and garrisons across the country, select personnel are ready to deploy 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. This unit must provide a fast initial response. To always be ready, they regularly carry out deployment training. The vehicles and equipment used by this unit undergo weekly inspections. Items are loaded onto vehicles in a carefully determined order. Fast Force is ready to deploy within one hour of being requested. A fast initial response is crucial because there's a time limit for saving lives. Statistics from the massive quake that affected Kobe City in 1995 show that around 75% of the people rescued in the first 24 hours survived, but this rate decreases over time. After 72 hours, that number drops to just 5%. To ensure rescue work within the first 72 hours, they're always looking for ways to reduce their response time. To respond as quickly as possible, Fast Force keeps special equipment ready. Fast Force member Kuni explains. This is the Life Saving System, a collection of more than 50 special disaster relief tools suited to rapid rescue operations. The equipment is compact and portable for efficient rescue work. It might seem like a major disaster would require heavy machinery. But 
Natural disasters can scatter debris and make roadways impassable, blocking access to large and heavy vehicles and equipment. In these cases, rescuers must proceed on foot, carrying their equipment. That's why each item in the life-saving system is chosen for portability. Here's how these tools can help speed up rescue work. This is the first item used at the disaster site, a rock drill. Buildings may collapse during or after an earthquake, blocking roads with debris. This rock drill is used first to clear a pathway to quake victims. The drill tip is placed on concrete or stone. The handle is raised and dropped repeatedly. The device's weight drives the tip in. This can easily break apart 12 centimeter wide concrete blocks. Multiple members work as a team to remove debris and get closer to the victims. Next up is this engine cutter. This is used when people are trapped inside buildings that are still sturdy. It can cut through thick concrete walls and iron doors to release people inside. When dealing with collapsed houses, this hydraulic jack allows rescuers to lift heavy objects with little effort. It's effective for people who are trapped under collapsed beams. The jack is placed in an opening amid the rubble. The support being placed on the jack is raised, creating enough space beneath the rubble to rescue the person. These tools are kept in shipping containers for immediate dispatch to disaster sites, avoiding delays and rescuing more people. If a visitor to Japan is caught up in a natural disaster, how should they protect themselves? Here are some Self-Defense Forces style survival techniques that can help. The first is for protection from the cold. Make holes in these three places. You can tear the plastic to create the holes. When ready, Cover your torso with a plastic bag. Also, crumple up some newspaper like this and insert it under the plastic bag. Crumpling the paper creates pockets of air for better insulation. Lastly, it's a good idea to tie the bottom of the bag closed to prevent heat from escaping. The next survival technique is how to safely transport an injured person. You will need two jackets, two poles, and two people. These can be clothesline poles or similar. First, one person lifts the two poles at one end. Then, the other grabs the bottom of their jacket and pulls it forward. From this point, 
he pulls forward on both the sleeves and the bottom of the jacket. Repeat this with the second jacket and you've created a stretcher. Carefully place the injured person onto the stretcher. The transporters should carry the stretcher in the direction of the injured person's feet, so the injured person can feel at ease seeing where they're going. Another option is to carry the person in your arms. Two people join hands under the injured person's knees. Do the same behind their back and then lift. Working in pairs allows you to transport people without becoming exhausted. In an emergency, being prepared can save a life. The Self-Defense Forces are exploring the use of computer simulations to aid in rescue operations. We got a look at a new approach that uses digital twins. A digital twin is a nearly identical digital model of a real-world item or location in a virtual space. This is a digital twin of Tokyo's Shibuya district. At first glance, it looks like the real thing, but actually, this is all computer graphics. And it doesn't only create replicas. An important point is that this can also run simulations. Tohoku University professor Koshimura Shunichi is working with the SDF on disaster prevention technologies that use digital twins. In the massive 2011 earthquake, a large span of coastal area was hit hard, as the resulting tsunami claimed many lives. So Tohoku University made a digital twin of a seaside town, with every building recreated in minute detail. Koshimura used this digital twin to develop a tsunami prediction system. When a real earthquake occurs, this system immediately generates a simulation based on its location and strength. The goal is to predict how far inland a resulting tsunami may reach and where damage may occur before the actual tsunami arrives. In November 2024, disaster prevention drills took place that used this prediction system to simulate a massive earthquake event. 3,400 SDF members participated, along with all six prefectural governments in Northeast Japan. The hypothetical quake was a magnitude 9 event centered off the coast of Iwate Prefecture. Koshimura's system completed a tsunami forecast just 11 minutes after the earthquake hit and forwarded those results to the SDF. This map shows the completed forecast. The white areas were predicted to be at no risk of flooding. The red and purple areas were at risk of severe damage, with flooding more than five meters high. With this information, the SDF could identify districts with a high risk of flooding. They practice prioritizing their rescue efforts. It's thought that this system will lead to faster and more accurate rescue operations. The Self-Defense Forces are always improving their disaster preparations, incorporating wisdom from past experiences with new technologies. 
it's important for us regular citizens to also be as ready as we can.